sister or brother. Right, exactly. So I personally feel, yes, there are questions. Maybe they're not for this setting today or for this forum, but it's for me to take home with me and sit down and dialogue with the Holy Spirit. Right, there you go. That's, that, that's just that's just the process, right. and you use you added the S to process processes. Uh -huh. We're not there yet. I'm still in the process. How long I stay at this juncture? That's up to me. How much time do I want to put in my source? Right. And it goes back. It's all personal. Right. It's personal. Yeah. That's why I was saying earlier. You mm -hmm. gotta be. You have to be. You have to be yeah. honest with yourself. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you have it's, to. Uh, this is doing it. Pay attention in the Old Testament. How many times you see the angel come down with some type of measuring tool? Okay. Uh, in several instances, the angels come down. In fact, I think it is in uh, it's in the Zechariah. The angel came with a measuring tool. Mm -hmm. And Zechariah asked him, what are you doing? He mm -hmm. says, I have come to measure mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Yes, sir. All right. He said, I come to measure now. And then he did his thing and he went away. And then another angel showed up and he said, go back and tell that young man this. He said, Jerusalem should be a city without walls. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Holy Spirit takes a measured approach when he's teaching us. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is a great teacher. Yes. Yes. He takes a measured approach. He'll measure off this much. Uh -huh. Introduce it, you to it. His purpose is now you got to get immersed in it. Yes. Don't just skim over it. Yes. Make sure you got it. Yes. That's it. Then he'll measure off another something. something. Introduce you to that. Mm -hmm. Get you immersed in that. He's building the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's building the kingdom in you. Yes. He takes a very measured approach. Yes. But at the same time, we have got to measure ourselves too. Mm -hmm. By means of assessing mm -hmm. and evaluating ourselves. Uh, look when you when you measure when you assess you always look at data data uh -huh. data an example of looking at data when it comes to paradigm is you monitor how you're thinking okay. and how you're talking uh -huh. Uh -huh. you monitor that uh -huh. you say ah, I got a lot of work here to do yeah. 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 that ain't come from that thought is not from the mind of God right. yeah. you assess data yeah. okay possible now when you're talking to Born again. I like the word again. Uh, right. You know, you're always born again to another truth. Uh -huh. You know, when you think you got it in the kingdom, then you're born again to another truth. Right. Another uh -huh. truth. It just keeps going and going right. and going. So I like the word again. Amen. That's good. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Uh, we realize that kingdom paradigm or the kingdom lifestyle is a, is a journey of evolving. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Evolving. Um, and we started out teaching the kingdom, the kingdom, some men started out teaching the kingdom. We were not ready for this curriculum yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as we evolved into kingdom teaching, mm -hmm. then we were ready. It's like God strategically, when you get to this point, and you have evolved to this point, now you're ready for right. this. Mm -hmm. you know, this wasn't exposed to us when we first started. Right. Right. There, was a, there was an entry point into the kingdom. Uh -huh. And then there's a point where you start, let me say, internalize, mm -hmm. uh, Formalize. Formalize and materialize. Yeah. These steps will take place. It's, it's also it's also synonymous with uh, knock and the door shall be open. Uh -huh. you know, right. it's, it's with that. You you got to knock first. Uh -huh. That's 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 formalized. Yeah. Right. And, and then you act. That's that's uh, uh, internalized. Then it's formalized. Then materialize and the door is open. Yeah. Yeah. You're now walking in the kingdom. Yeah. You're not walking in the kingdom. Like, it's a 12 year journey for me, and I'm still scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wrote those three stages. And again, what, I think it's lesson two. Actually, it's in this lesson, but it's far along. Where we actually get into depth on that, those three processes. But that every truth that you are introduced to pertaining to the kingdom mm -hmm. needs to go through that process. Yeah. You internalize it first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you formalize it. Then, when in the formalizing stage, you get a lot of you get some subconscious activity, meaning that you begin to think about it without you making yourself think about it. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's that. At the materialized stage, you get high subconscious activity. That's where manifestation can take place. Mm -hmm. It's you have owned that truth at that point. Yes. Yes. Scripture says, "Proverbs by the truth and set it not." 
So you got to take ownership of it. It has to become a part of you. It has to become who you are. And that's that's what you that's that's what's going to happen now when we go through this internalized, formalized, and materialized. <coughs> Again, this is not just stuff you run over. Mm -hmm. You've got to be diligent and meditate day and night. It has to become part of your source. You've got to shut down everything that competes with shifting the paradigm. I challenge the people uh, in the class one, one week, I say shut down preaching, mm -hmm. teaching, anything you've got that's in place, that has displaced mm -hmm. the source. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because believe it or not, some of us are tuned to another sound. Mm -hmm. Eli was tuned to Samuel, mm -hmm. which is why when, if Samuel didn't say it, he didn't think God spoke. Mm -hmm. He's tuned, some of y'all sitting in here now, you're tuned to your pastor. Mm -hmm. So you're not hearing anything God is saying about you that the pastors don't say. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you're not tuned to the heart of God because you don't meditate on his thoughts. Wow, that's good. Break time. <laughs> Chew on that while you get some refreshments. <laughs> we'll be back in still one to ten probably. Ten minutes. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started and maximize our time. I'm just going to uh, put a question out uh, that maybe some others of you have thought about. Uh, how, how does it work now when we are we're, we're in the world, right? Scriptures say we're in the world, we're not of the world. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, when we're conducting business and things like that, how does that play out? Are we, are we contributing to the Babylonian system? Are we feeding into it? Are we promoting it? How does that work? Walmart, ain't, Walmart is not kingdom, right? Uh, we, at least we don't think so. Uh, Mr. Walter was, uh, what's that man, Mr. Sam Walter? I believe he was saved. So what's, what's your obligation, what's your assignment? <coughs> okay, very good. Influence, impact. Remember Jeremiah 29, God told them, He says, I brought you down here to Babylon. He brought them to Babylon. <laughs> right? God said, I brought you here. What was the assignment? I want you to get engaged and influence. The, I want you to influence this place, yeah, influence yeah. these people. So he told them, get married, have babies, plant gardens, and all that kind of stuff. No, it's get engaged. Uh -huh. You have an assignment where God has planted you. Mm -hmm. And this is religion, what religion does, religion tries to create what is called homogeneous, homogenous groups. You know what that word means? Homogenous. <laughs> homogeneous, homogenous. Homo means same. So a homogenous group is religion now wants to get everybody to look alike, talk alike, think alike, yeah. act alike. And we're going to get everybody in one room, and we're going to stick together, and we're not going to participate or, 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 or do anything with anybody that don't think like us, don't act like us, don't talk. That is not kingdom. That's not, that's not, that's not. And that's what you got going on in a lot of churches. We create these homogenous groups. We shout a lot, we sing a lot, we jump. Everybody, if you get somebody off the street next in a month, you got them jumping up and down and running around the church just like you. That's a homogenous, that has never been God's intent or purpose. It's to change everybody to look the same. Think like him, yes. Have his mindset, his character, his intent but express differently based upon the varying gifts and grace that he's placed on your life. So our assignment now when we go into places and where God has set us is to impact and influence that environment. That's why he wants us engaged. He wants us on the school boards in the education arena. He wants us, he wants us, uh, and this is something we're going to talk about down the line, uh, he wants us, you know, with, with the owner's ear, 
He wants us to have a relationship, a connection with the owner. And like Christ was saying, having that reputation that this man, when he says something now, better listen. He wants us in those type of positions mm -hmm. to influence. That's what Prophet was talking about when he said colonize. It's the impact. It's the influence. But just sitting up in church just because you think that's a safe environment, that's not God's intent mm -hmm. or purpose. You're having no impact outside of that environment whatsoever. None. Which is why I said this earlier. Until you Take your gift and grace to the marketplace. Yes. Your influence is minimal. You can talk apostle and prophet all you want yeah. until you can package that and take that gift, that grace to the marketplace. Yes. Your influence is minimal. So you can call me right. Because I know who I am. The people refer to me as Mr. V in my sphere of influence. The, Jesus asked the people that said, Did you who did you go to the wilderness to see? A man dressed in nice clothes? Nah, because he got on camera hat. So you didn't go there and see all that. Said, so did you go to see a prophet? What did Jesus say? Yes, and more than a prophet. More to this man than what you see. So you don't really know me, so you can call me right or Mr. Vini. Because profit is a limitation. The world is my stage. Prophet Ralph, God just showed us that to Prophet Ralph. Took him from the from following the sheep local to being a prince over Israel, Israel, national stage. Just like that. Don't limit yourself to a one-dimensional environment. We're not trying to talk down church, but you know, we, yes. we have to understand the purpose and the intent of God for the church setting. Yes. And it was, in fact, to equip and to train. Yes. When we get into uh we ain't gonna get that today. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna get that. But the body of Christ is 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 equivalent to Congress. Mm -hmm. Congress is a <coughs> governing body, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. a ruling body. Okay, watch this. Ecclesia mm -hmm. is the Greek word for for, for uh, body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Ecclesia. It's a governing body. Mm -hmm. Now, when you when you look up when you study the word Congress, Congress is when they when the Congress come together, they are about legislation, mm -hmm. which is enacting laws. So until you get a bunch, till you get a group of people now who understand kingdom law, mm -hmm. kingdom truth, mm -hmm. you ain't got the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Congregation don't that is not the same thing as congregation is when congregants come together to fellowship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've adopted that for church. Mm -hmm. That ain't. Church, that ain't the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a authoritative, tainted body, mm -hmm. a governing body. So it means that we got people that understand how to enforce the laws and the will of God coming together. Mm -hmm. Congress again comes together to legislate. Mm -hmm. This is the, these are the laws we're putting in place. Mm -hmm. But if you got people that don't even know nothing about kingdom, that are just congregating together, that ain't church. No. <laughs> Homogenous yeah. groups. What do you do with those groups? You teach them and train them and equip them for kingdom. So understand what the body of Christ is. It's Congress. <laughs> it's a congressional group. <coughs> Ecclesia. All right. Now, so God told some people, God told some people to launch ecclesia, and they had the other definition in their thinking 
of what ecclesia was, <coughs> so they started a church. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it was never meant to be a church. Which takes us back to the importance now of understand, get, understanding God's language. Mm -hmm. Speaking his language. Concepts and things like that are different based upon the language. <laughs> if you leave here today, get on a plane and go to Africa. One of the predominant languages in Africa is uh, Swahili. <clears throat> I've been to Africa four times and I speak about four words of Swahili. One for every time I win. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. There was no anointing, there was no grace that came upon me that caused me to know Swahili. If I was going to be able to communicate that language, I was going to have to do what? Learn. Same thing with the kingdom. The kingdom is a country. If you're going to communicate in the kingdom, you're going to do business in the kingdom, you've got to learn the what? Language. Ain't nobody gonna lay no hands on you and you know it. Ain't nobody gonna prophesy to you and you know it. You got to go through training. Training and teaching is different from preaching. Notice now, in this setting, we're asking, the purpose of asking questions back to the audience is to measure you. Are you getting it? Preaching doesn't do that. Preaching don't care. Because next Sunday when you come back to preaching, it's another message. Nobody asks you if you got the last message. So we got people that listen to preaching, got a lot of information, no understanding. And all you're getting, get what? Understanding. You ain't getting no understanding. They just went to the next message. Never asked you, did you get that? <laughs> Jesus always did assessments. He taught a lesson mm -hmm. to the disciples, showed them, demonstrated, fed multitudes. What did he do? Put them on a boat. Let me see what you're working with now. That's the assessment. Mm -hmm. Let me see if you can apply what I taught you. Okay, what's the question? I'm in the church thing, but how do I come out of it? Wow. You got to make a choice. So this <laughs> Value. What's most important to you? Let me ask, ask them that question. Let me ask you a question. What is most important to you? you. Jesus. Your church or this unlimited kingdom mm -hmm. that the Father has given us access to? What's most important to you? That's right. it was more than, it was more than and that's the question that a lot of us face. What's more important? Value. Now change your values. What's most important? And the other one was before we took a break. Uh, the question was, when you and Prophet came into this curriculum, even though you guys have been in the kingdom for a while, and you say you were process, they heard you when you said, you, when you were first started reading it, I don't know about this, how did you grab it? They were thinking, was this a new paradigm? Consistency. And follow through. I sat down with it. I kept going over it. I kept allowed the Holy Spirit to take that information and teach me. Hopefully they hear it. They hear it. Yeah. It's consistency and follow through. These are things, these truths coming up against stuff you believe all your life. Paradigms don't shift just like that. They say I'm coming next month. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions before we move on? Wow. Y'all took up all my time. I didn't <laughs> it's good though. Where it's we at? Good. Uh, okay, so we're gonna move on from here. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right here. 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 Right an actualization of heaven's present rule within them, waiting for you to draw from its substance to create the life, business, family, and relationships you want. Did you hear that? Again, we still talk about the paradigm. This is the significance. Salvation gives you the ticket. Shifting the paradigm awakens in you the reality of the kingdom. 
all right, and brings alive, wakes up all of these, these things that the Father had deposited in us through his DNA, all right, and, and, and from that we can create the life, the business, the family, and relationships we want. This is what I posted on Facebook this week. I said, kingdom is the way to build a life that doesn't need to re be repaired every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. When you shift yeah. paradigms, like mm -hmm. Prophet told us, it never goes back. Mm -hmm. So now you have something stable mm -hmm. that's going to produce the same invariable consequences every time you operate this machine. All right. Every time I operate this machine, this thing was representative of the kingdom. Every time I push the on button, it's going to come on. That's the way the kingdom is. Invariable. We learn how to operate the principles and the laws of the kingdom. They work every time. Are there people getting answers and things like that outside? Yeah, there are things that are seeping through. People are tapping into things by accident. But they had, like Prophet said, can't get any consistency because we don't understand the laws and the concepts and the principles that are causing these things to happen. All right? And, and there's several lessons down where we really get into the law, the laws of the kingdom. Well, remember now, and again, I, when, when we use the term law, don't think Old Testament law. That's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about laws or uh, what's another word for it? Uh, principles that operate this kingdom system. For instance, there's a law of faith. This teaching is going to redefine what you believe faith is. There's a law of faith that will work every time you apply the correct pressure or force to it. It will work just like gravity if you know how to operate it. It will work every time. Again, laws give invariable consequences. They will work every time the correct force of pressure is applied. Laws can be what? Review question. Laws can be two things. What are they? Prophet told you this. Active or inactive. How do you activate a law? By applying the correct force of pressure. When you activate a law, you bind it. If a law, if if a law is loose, it's inactive. That's totally different. See, when you come binding, that means that law is active in your life. Binding means to put two things together. These are legal terms, government terms. We have adapted the reverse understanding of that. Exactly. He's talk, he says, I give you the keys. What are the keys? The laws and the principles. I'm giving you access to every law and every principle that runs this system. Now, it's incumbent upon you because you can bind it, make it active, or you can lose it. You can make it inactive. Everything that's not showing up in your life is a result of laws being inactive. And one of the most simplest laws to activate in your life is the law of confession. What you decree, what you declare, what you got to keep force on it. You got to be consistent in it, day and night. Can't say it every day, then. If 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 the father says something to you tonight, when that situation involves in front of you, that's what you got to say to that situation. Jesus already talked to Jesus already talked to the father about that fig tree. So when he comes to the fig tree, he don't say nothing more than what he heard the father saying and what was on the father's heart about that tree. Nothing more, nothing less. He didn't sit there and scream and holler and try to knock it down. Come on, we in church now. I'm going to scream and holler and spit on you until you fall down. He didn't do all of that. He only said what the father had already said. And then he left it alone. The law did it. Came back next day is dried up. I like what Prophet Ralph said earlier. He said that Jesus told the people, don't, when they healed them, said, don't tell them about it. I always wondered about that. Jesus understood the law did it, the law healing. It works every time. We got to learn how to operate these laws. Who's going to teach you? Review question. 
Holy Spirit. Who do you talk about that to about that? You gotta go home and I tell you, Holy Spirit, come on.